Engineering 305, example problem 5-7, got the headset on, so now you're actually going to get sound this time, where um, the last time I started, I didn't have the headset on, and you didn't get any sound. Um, so example problem 5-7, there are nine 25 millimeter, that's a one inch, diameter steel, uh, there's a material property, reinforcing bars are used in the short concrete, concrete's got material properties, pier, this little guy right here, um, shown in figure 512. We're going to put a load on that, and we call it P, but it, we know what it is. It's 650 kilonewtons, is applied to the pier through a rigid capping plate. Why is it rigid? Well, that be, because we have to do that because we need those deflect. We have to know something about the deflections. And if that plate isn't rigid, well, then we wouldn't know what we need to know at the end of the problem. Um, what we know is the the steel and the concrete both move together because that cap is rigid. So we're supposed to find the stresses in the concrete and in the steel. So I'll, um, I'll write that down right here. Find the stresses in the concrete and the stresses in the steel. And that's, you're right, it's behind that. Well, I've got a couple things written down, honestly. I wrote down... <clears throat> I gave a little quick picture with 650 kilonewtons. That's 146,000 pounds. I wanted to know what that was, which is equal to 36 minivans. So when you go through and solve this, I, I don't care how what units you use, whether you use kilonewtons or, or kilopounds or or minivans, they're they're all fine. Um, unfortunately, our our Young's modulus is in gigapascal, so we probably should work in kilonewtons and meters squared so that we get those things in the right units. It's a lot easier to balance units when you use, not that minivans isn't a standard unit, but you know what I mean. So let's find our stress in the concrete. Well, we know from chapter two, when we define stress, that stress, the stress of the concrete is going to be the force of the concrete divided by the area of the concrete. And I can also write the stress in the steel is equal to the force of the steel divided by the area of the steel. And I'm going to say, look, we got an equation. Now just go solve it. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's my unknowns in red. Um, oh. My unknowns are in red. You know I'm looking for my stress. So, and, so there's two, and then I don't know my force in my concrete, and I don't know my force in my steel. So I have two equations and four unknowns. Two equations and four unknowns. So, that says we need another equation. One equation that jumps out to me really pretty quickly is that, if I did a free body diagram, and in fact, they're showing that in the picture. Um, if I did a free body diagram of just the plate, and I'll, uh, I'll draw it up here. I've got P acting down, and I've got two forces acting up. The force of the concrete and the force of the steel. And so, that's okay. Um, that tells me that the force, sorry, wrong color. The force of the concrete plus the force of the steel is equal to 650 kilonewtons, or that P that's acting downward. But the concrete's pushing up and the steel is pushing up, so that's that's good, or we're pushing down on the concrete and steel, but that's got to be in balance. So I've got that equation. Now, I didn't add an unknown. This is, this is now three equations. This is one, here's two, here's three. I need one more equation. And it's this next equation that starts to go, hmm, what do I have to do? What do I... Well, the equations that we're working here, this delta is equal to PL over AE. Does that shine any light on what we're doing? It might. It might. It also might make it worse, too. If I said the deflection in the concrete was equal to the force of the concrete times the length of the concrete divided by 
the area of the concrete and the Young's modulus of the concrete, then, hold on, I want to rewrite that in black. Okay, no tricks. I just rewrote it. That's all I did. Now, I've added an unknown. So here's number five. And I added an equation. So here's number four. But I could also write down the same equation for the steel. Delta of the steel is equal to F of the steel, L of the steel, divided by A of the steel, E of the steel. And, and again, that's, that's adding a sixth unknown and adding a fifth equation. I know, well, I, I can't say I know, um, but the forces are unknown number three, the length I know, the areas I know, and the, and the material properties I know. So I, I haven't, I, I'm being honest, I got five equations, six unknowns. I need one more equation, or unless it introduces another variable, unless it introduces, do I know anything else? Yes, I do. The assumption that was in the, in the statement was that this cap, this cap here is rigid. And so I know without adding a variable and, and doing it in the right color, I've got delta C is equal to delta S. That is, the amount that the concrete crushes is equal to the amount that the steel crushes. So now I have, there's equation number six, and I only have six unknowns. I'm all good. But now you got an ugly, I don't want to say it's an ugly system to solve. You just have, we just have to solve it. And so we could just start punching in values and working through it. And I would say, um, realistically, we're going to take equation six and we're going to drop in equation four and five so that we get rid of all of that. And we're going to rewrite that so that F, uh, force of the concrete is equal to force of the steel times, and I'm going to write it in two, two chunks, A of the steel, E of the steel, A of the concrete, E of the concrete, L of the concrete. All right? Now I've just got those two ratios to sort through, and if we... Um, if we pound through that, just a little bit of calculator skills, just a little bit of calculator skills, and um, the first thing I'm going to, what I'm going to do, honestly, is I know the length of the steel and the length of the concrete are the same, and so that allows me to rewrite this force of the steel times Area of the concrete, Young's modulus of the concrete, area of the steel, E of the steel. And we can start banging it out. Area of the steel is a known. It's, um, remember it was, and I can go back to the problem statement. There are nine 25 diameter steel rods. Okay, so it's nine times pi over four times D squared. Now I started, I wrote 25 because it's 25 millimeter, but I want 0 0.025 meter squared. All right. And so that's going to come up with, that's going to come up with, um, well, let me get my calculator out. There you go. 0 0.00441562. Yeah, maybe I don't want all those digits, but that's what it came out to. Um, that's the area of the steel. The area of the concrete is equal to, well, I got to pull up my figure again. Oh, uh, sorry, wrong button. There's my figure. It is 250 millimeters squared, but then I subtract, so 0 0.250 squared minus the area of the con uh, area of the steel area of the steel. So I can go back to my trusty dusty calculator and calculate that. <clears throat> That's going to give me, 
hold on. 0 0.0581 meters squared. Glad glad my uh, picture got in the way there. All right. Oh, I keep sliding into my chair. That's the problem with a comfy chair. You just keep sliding in. It's all good. Um, and then I've got my Young's modulus, my ratio of that. So I'm going to calculate that out. And I'm going to come up with, oh, I'm going to, so I'm going to say my force in the concrete is equal to the force in the steel times area of the concrete 0 0.0581. And then I got to divide that by the area of the steel and I'm, my units went away. So area of the steel is 0 0.00441, 0 0.0442. And then Young's modulus for the concrete, which you can just see at the top, is 30 GPA. And the GPAs go away, so it's just 30 over 200. All right? Back to the trusty, dusty calculator. I'm, I'm actually doing it. I know you guys don't believe me, but, but I'm actually running a calculator on the other screen. Um, for better television, I'll pause it again. Here you go. Equals... Oh, I should have wrote it down. Equals 1.97. FC is equal to 1.97 times the force of the steel. <clears throat> Which is interesting that the concrete is more than 10 times the area, but it only carries twice the force. Just, just think through those things. Just think through those things. Um, and now I know... Now I can go back to equation three, force of the concrete plus the force of the steel is equal to 650 kilonewtons. Well, force of the concrete is equal to 1.97 times the force of steel. So 1.97 times the force of the steel plus the force of the steel is equal to 650 kilonewtons. Or force of the steel is equal to 650 kilonewtons divided by 2.97 is equal to, yeah, I know, i got to pull up my calculator. So you get the force of the steel is equal to 650 divided by 2.97. You get 218 kilonewtons. And then the force in the concrete is 432 kilonewtons. Now, I should probably be looking in the book to see if I would play along. Yeah, they call it P in the sub R is 218 kilonewtons. So, yeah, okay, we got that right. And I got that right. Now, now you've got forces. Now you can go back and find, because we were supposed to find, if you go all the way back, scroll back in our little answer, we're supposed to be finding the stresses. So take that information. And now come back to here and go, the stress, sorry, I don't want that. Actually, we, we have these equations above. We use these as a, like equation one and two. So it would be the stress in the concrete is equal to the force in the concrete over the area of the concrete. And I can, um, I can get that force of the concrete was 432 kilonewtons. And the area of the concrete from right there was the 0 0.0581 meters squared. And so I jumped to my calculator and I get an answer for that. And while I'm grabbing that answer, I'm also going to do the, for the stress in the steel, which is equal to the force in the steel divided by the area of steel equals the 218 kilonewtons divided by the much smaller area 0 0.004415 which is 442 meters squared okay be right back with both of those so there you can see i calculated the stress in the concrete 7435 megapascals and the stress in the steel at 49,321 megapascals. All right, I think there was something else we had to do. We better look at our problem statement again. 
Oh, yeah, how much does it shorten? They actually did want us to find delta. Now, I could find delta for either the concrete or the steel, um, and, and I'd be all set. So um, let's just punch away with delta in the concrete is equal to force of the concrete, length of the concrete over A, E, concrete. And, and then we start putting in our values. So our, actually, we can shorten this up a little bit. I know that force over area is the stress, which is what I just calculated. So that's 7435 times the length of the concrete divided by Young's modulus for the concrete. And, and I have, this is in megapascals, if, if you wanted to see that. And then length of the concrete was, oh, I could go back to my picture um picture being right there 600 millimeters so that's equal to 7435 megapascals 600 oh no it's 0.600 meters divided by e young's modulus oh it's i could scroll all the way to the top or i could just flip that on and go yep e was uh 30 gigapascals 30 e9 and I can then calculate that all out, and I get that my shrinkage is 0.1485 millimeters. Let's see, a tenth of a millimeter. A millimeter is 40 thousandths, so that would be um, four thousandths plus another half, so about six thousandths of an inch with, uh, remember, how much was this? 36 minivans sitting on the top. 36 minivan. Sorry, I had that kind of hidden a little bit. Just for that, we'll get out the fancy pen is Delta. And there's my answer. 36 minivans on this system. If I go back, uh, 250 millimeters. So it's not even a foot of concrete. And that's how strong that it is. Now, the question we should be asking also is, can the concrete support that stress without breaking. And, uh, you know, hold on, let me, um, let me grab my book and I'll uh, take a look. So I'm looking at the book inside the front cover and I've got material properties and I can't, you can't really see that. And inside the front cover, I'm in English units. And if I go to the back cover, which again, you can't see cause the lights got a nasty glare. Um, but my face is lit up just so much better than it was when I tried this before. Uh, the steel, the steel which has a stress of 49,000 MPA or 50 gigapascals, the steel uh, is capable of structural steel. Ultimate strength in tension is 450 450 megapascals. So this is quite a bit higher than the steel can take in tension, but it doesn't have a compression rating. Um, maybe it doesn't fail in compression so easy. So let's look at our concrete. Concrete all the way at the bottom. Concrete medium strength, or and then there's also fairly high strength, is capable of supporting... 34 megapascals. So the fairly high strength is 34 megapascals. So this is quite a bit higher. This is um, really high. It makes me wonder if I got my answers right. And I'm looking in the... So now, hold on, and i got to figure something else out. Yeah, actually, there is a problem right here. That's not in megapascals. That's in kilopascals. I rounded that. When I went 49,000, it should be 49 point, and then it would be in megapascals. But I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I put 49,000 and then still put the megapascals. So it really should be 7 point. You know what? Let me do this in another color in the same place so that it's a little more obvious. Um, it should be the correct answer, 7.4 megapascals. And then, and then, and you know, and I, and I had to go do that. I had to go back and check. Um, I actually checked the answer in the book. And then my steel, my, um, my 
concrete can handle it and my steel can handle it too because this is 49 megapascals um and my steel that's that's actually got a huge safety factor about fact safety factor of about seven um actually for almost both of them they're really good so 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 that's good bummer about carrying an extra you know factor of a thousand but um yep being kind of sloppy that, that that's what got me so there you go that's a whole new class of problems where you have to have the insight to say okay it's rigid so my deflection in the steel is the deflection in the concrete and you have to know you have to see that you have to then know the sum of the forces is equal to something and that may give you another equation but every one of the situations are different the next one we get into um five eight is going to give us a, a situation where the weight again balances between two different materials kind of like this one except now one's in tension and one's in compression and they don't deflect the same amount they deflect differently and we'll see that the the problem after that there's a lever bar in play and they deflect as a ratio of each other and but the theme is kind of the same and once you've battled through five or six or ten or a hundred of these they they don't become easy because there's just a lot of math involved and you make silly mistakes They're like dropping a factor of a thousand, but, um, they do become, but practice is key. Uh, practice is key. So, all right, we'll see you on the next example problem, which will be five, eight.